Hi, this is Stacy. Come play with me. A simple bullseye cane is wrapping one color of clay around another color of clay made into a log. You can choose any color combo you like and wrap as many colors as you like around the log. I recommend starting with a good size log and thicker wraps as you will start to lose your intended design as the cane is reduced. I created and colored the template for you, my viewer. You do not have to make a template first. However, having a template will help as a reference to maintain proportion control. I mixed half Primo Pearl accents with half Robin's Egg Souffle because I wanted a more shimmery effect to go along with the Twinkle Twinkle and the 18 karat gold Primo accents. Roll your clay into a log. I use an acrylic plate to maintain uniformity as I roll. You can use your hands, it will just appear more lumpy. Place your log on your first sheet and then trim that out to match your log. Using your blade, pick up the clay from your work surface, smoothing that out there and rolling it gently until it touches the other side. I'll do that a couple of times so that I can see the mark that it makes. And then I'm gonna use my blade and I'm going to trim right where that mark is on my sheet. Just make sure you smooth the seams out so that they match. And then roll again with your second sheet of clay. I'm going to trim the log so that it's matching the second sheet of clay. And then trim that out again. And bring those together and smooth that again so that they meet. You can see here I have a corner that didn't have both thicknesses so I'm just going to take a scrap piece of clay and fill that area in. And it's not quite thick enough. Here's the leftover. I'm going to take that sheet place it on and trim it out again. I just realized when I got started into this, I just didn't have enough of the 18 karat gold clay to roll it out all uniform in that thickness. So as a result of that, I have just continually taken the scraps that I've had and rolled them out again. And I don't want to pull that all the way to that seam because then it'll thin out. So I have this left over here and I have scraps set to the side. I'm just going to take those scraps and put them right where that space is. Again, I'm just wanting to maintain the uniformity and the thickness of my outer layer. Just trim up the excess there. At this point, it doesn't matter. 
that there's <clears throat> broken pieces because you're going to be reducing anyway and all of that will uh, will be gone and I'm pretty happy with that if I had more 18 karat gold I probably would have added a little bit more but I'm going to start reducing what I have now <clears throat> I'm going to start in the center Just use your thumbs and your fingers and gently push in the center on each side working towards your end. I'm going to do this and do one end at a time. And keep moving your cane around to maintain a circular shape as best as possible. I'm going to do this off the work surface initially. Roll your log on a work surface and then cut into three pieces and reduce the other canes to smaller sizes. And here are the canes that I will use for this project. Okay. Now I have all three canes, and I have this is a Sculpey Hollow Bead Maker, one of two work surfaces that I will use. I'm just taking slices and with my fingers, just uh, pressing and somewhat distortion in, in a way that uh, it's not perfectly round, somewhat uniform, as you may find that you've made a slice and maybe there's one side that's thicker or thinner than the other. Don't worry about the fingerprints. Just press that on there. I want the shape of the Hello Bead Maker. I also have a light bulb, and I'm going to use both of these and cover all of them and then bake those pieces before we move on to the next step. Remove your glass insert and using your Cato liquid clay with a brush, you want to apply a very thin coat to the entire frame. You want to spread it on pretty thin. I find if you put too much on, the clay just ends up moving around and uh, it actually can become a pretty messy job. So I cut out my clay into strips. I just thought that it would be easier to apply in that manner. Cover your frame completely and do not bake at this time. I have my pieces here that are baked. And using your Cato Liquid Poly Clay, apply a little bit to the back of your baked piece and apply in any random fashion that you like and then bake again at your manufacturer's instruction. Okay, and I'm allowing this piece now to completely cool down before I go to the finishing step. Okay, now my piece is completely cooled and I'm going to finish this piece with the tiny Pandora Deep Shine Brush on UV Finish. You can get this kit at tinypandoraboutique.com and refill kits are available as well. You see I poured a generous amount of the UV resin into the medicine cup that's provided, the brushes provided as well. And again, that is a tiny 
Pandora Deep Shine Brush on UV Finish from tinypandoraboutique.com. I completely submerge my brush at first, but then I remove a lot of the thickness from the outer layer of the brush. your end result if it's too much will just end up bubbly. This is not a very very heavy pressure that you apply and as we go through and you see as I am applying it I'm going uh, back and forth in all different directions with the brush and just from that little bit you can see how far that will actually go. This will be my first of two coats um, actually baking or curing rather um, for a cycle of about four minutes in between the two coats. I hope you enjoyed claying with me today. We have a free PDF available for you at the tinypandoraboutique.com.